So first up, let's get our terminology down. I want to talk about the different types of fragrances you're going to see out there and some of the keynotes. The first fragrance type we're going to talk about are aquatics. Now, you can't squeeze smell out of the ocean, but what you can do is mimic it. And that's what these fragrances are meant to do. Now, most fragrances in this category are going to label sea notes, ocean notes, salt notes, aquatic notes. But basically what they're talking about is that they contain calone and calones in about 95% of aquatic fragrances. And it basically mimics the smell of the ocean. Next up, we've got florals. And when guys think of florals, they think of a feminine scent. But guys, it's not just all about roses. And believe me, there's many masculine roses, but jasmine and rose are two of the dominant ones, but also violet leaf, which can be a very strong masculine smell. Next up, we've got oriental fragrances. These are going to have particular notes that are going to be stronger, deeper, longer lasting, patchouli, vanilla, amber, now, spicy fragrances fall under Oriental and they are going to have like Sichuan pepper, but they're also going to have smoke and incense like smells. These are fragrances that can tickle the nose. Next up, let's talk about leather fragrances. So when I mentioned violet leaf, that actually can smell a lot like leather when mixed with the right fragrances, maybe a little bit of birch. This is something that's very strong, very masculine. And a lot of guys like this. Next up, we've got gourmands and these type of fragrances, as the name implies, smell like different types of food, good food, food you want to get close to. Let's just say when you or gourmand, the right one, you smell like apple brandy. Maybe you smell like chocolate. This is something that draws in the ladies. Next up, we've got Chypris. And as the name implies, if you know your Latin, this goes back actually to the Romans. And these are going to be more some of the most versatile, some of the ones that you can actually dress up, dress down. But we're talking smells like oak moss, labdanum, and bergamot. Next up, we've got fougeres. And this comes from the word fern, but the dominant note here is going to be lavender. We're also going to see mixed in with a bit of oak moss and leather. These are very versatile fragrances for a man who can keep his cool. Next up, we've got citrus fragrances. One of the most common notes we're going to see out there. We see it at the top because it just dissipates really quick, but citrus fragrances smell clean and are easy for men to wear. And last but not least, the masculine wood fragrances. And there are so many different types of woods out there from oud, to sandalwood. You're going to get all different types of smells, and we oftentimes see these built into a fragrance's base. So, as many of you guys know, this masterpiece here from Tom Ford is one of my top 10 all-time picks. I bought this bottle with my own money at retail, and I would do it again. So, no surprise, I own the Parfum as well, but I don't think it's as good as the original. Still, it's damn good, and I'm very happy to own it. Unfortunately, I can't say the same thing, and in fact, I don't like Velvet Orchid. Which kind of sucks because this bottle sells for 210 retail. Now, I didn't pay that. I got it on a discounter. Still, it was close to $200 and that hurts. Now, really quick, gents, I want to share with you five fragrances in my collection that I really enjoy. First up, we've got Dolce & Gabbana's The One. Notes here are going to be amber, tobacco, ginger, grapefruit, and cardamom. Next up, we've got Burberry's Brit for Men. Notes are going to be rose, ginger, tonka bean, nutmeg, and cedar. Right here, I've got Versace's Dylan Blue Pour On. Notes are going to be bergamot, grapefruit, incense, violet leaf, and pepper. Next up, we got Michel Germain's Paris Sexual Noir. Notes here are going to be bergamot, cardamom, lavender, sweet tobacco, and tonka bean. And right here, I've got Prada's Lunarosa. Notes are going to be lavender, mint, bitter orange, sage, and musk. Now, gents, the retail cost of those five fragrances, 456 bucks. And imagine if you went out there and blind bought those and you didn't like half of them or you didn't like any of them. Guys, most stores do not take returns. You would be out almost 500 bucks. To solve this problem, gents, check out Scentbird. I've talked about them for years and I love what this company does. They make it easy for you to date a fragrance before you commit. You can get an eight mil sample. That's enough for a month. Over 120 sprays. And guys, you're going to be able to wear that fragrance for weeks and actually figure out if it suits you and your needs. Now, guys, if you haven't heard of Scentbird, it's a subscription service that makes it easy for you to be able to test fragrances at your home. And they've got different ways for you to go in there and choose. You can take one of their quizzes and they help to point you in the right direction. Now, gents, if you haven't been over to their website for a while, you want to get over there, they've upgraded and they've got this new section called Saks Select. Absolutely love it because they've got some of the more premium fragrances out there. And speaking of upgrades, let's talk about their new dispensers. If they listen to you guys, they realize, hey, we want to prevent leaks. We want something that is going to be easier to actually use. And these new dispensers, Sensors. They're actually using what looks like a little bit of a magnet to actually keep them together. So it goes in and out really easy. And the distributor right there, you simply twist this over and spray and boom, you're able to get access to your fragrance. I've been to their New York facility. I have talked with this company. I know who they are. And what I love is that they're making sure you're not getting any type of counterfeit fragrances. You're getting the real deal. And gents, with hundreds of fragrances to choose from, they've got the fragrances from the houses that you want to get fragrances from. We're talking Aqua de Parma, Vince Camuto, Joe 
Joseph Abud, Amage, Creed, Parfums de Marley, Dolce & Gabbana, Burberry, Prada, Versace, Florist London, and more. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. Go over to Scentbird, check them out. Awesome company. Now, really quick, let's talk concentrations. I've covered this before, so I'm just going to bring up this chart right here. Understand that Eau Fresh, 1% to 3%, Eau de Cologne, EDC, 2 to 4%, Eau de Toilette. This is one of the more common options we see out there for guys, 5 to 15%. And I'm talking about the fragrance oil, the concentration, the Eau de Parfum, 15 to 20%. And then we've got the Parfum at about 20 to 30%. Now, in general, a Parfum with a concentration of 25% fragrance oil should last a lot longer than an Eau Fresh with a 1% concentration. Now, understand that's a very general statement because there are Eau de Toilettes that are stronger, last longer, and project more than Eau de Parfums or even Parfums. In general, it depends about who made it, the formulation, and the notes that are being used. And by the way, despite what the internet says, longevity is not needed for all fragrances. It doesn't need to be nuclear to be awesome. A lot of people, they just want everything beast mode. But if you're going to be in a situation in which you don't want to project, you don't want to overpower, then that's actually a negative thing. So understand what you want. And by the way, when I say projection, what I'm talking about is how the fragrance sits on the skin and then projects off. A lot of that has to do with how hot you are. If you're sweating, it's going to project more. You're going to hear the word sillage. Now, what that talks about is actually the scent trail that is left when you're walking around. So there is a slight difference between the two. Now, the last chart I want to show you right here is the fragrance life cycle. And right here at the top, notice we've got citrus, fruits, we've got aromatics. In the heart, we've got floral, green, fruity, spicy notes. And then at the base, we've got wood and balsamics. So in case you didn't know, fragrances oftentimes are broken into various parts. At first, when you smell a fragrance, you're smelling the top notes. And then usually in the mid, after an hour, after 30 minutes sometimes, you will smell what's in the middle, then after a couple hours, the base. This isn't for all fragrances. You'll find some are linear, and that means they smell the same throughout the entire life cycle of the fragrance. But the more complex fragrances, the ones that you expect to pay a little bit more money for, are going to be the ones that are orchestrated and meant to be smelt in a particular way. And that's why you don't want to rub fragrances together because the idea here is that it can affect the way that those certain notes are released. It's a very small thing, but I know some people say they can smell a difference. All right, gents, after all of that, now let's get into the nitty gritty of actually buying the fragrances and how to do it. So for me, 95% of the fragrances, and I've got like 480 fragrances, I blind bought. And I'd have to say I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of them I really do not wear. I just keep them for research purposes and for using in videos. For me, that works. I don't think many of you guys are like this. You want to own maybe two, three, at the most, maybe 10 fragrances. And you want to make sure that every single one you buy is worth the money. You're going to get your, your wares out of this thing. So in that case, you want to try on the fragrance. Now, the best way to do this, as you could imagine, is simply to go into a box store, go into a duty-free, and actually to put the fragrance on. But before you do that, have a plan. Because when you walk in, you are going to be bombarded with tons of options. How are you going to choose? Most, Like most guys, you're going to choose what's in front of you. You're going to choose what's new. You're going to choose what's at the top of the shelf. You don't want to fall into that trap, especially if you want to find your signature scent. You want to go in there with a plan. Now, one of the best things you can do is simply look online and see what's being carried. Do a little bit of research. Look at the top selling fragrances out there and have an idea of one you want to try. Okay, so you've heard great things about this Creed Aventus, about Luna Rosa by Prada, or you know one of the other maybe amazing Prada fragrances out there. That's where you want to go. You know, go in there and try on what you need to try. Because if you don't have a plan, you could end up putting on a fragrance or testing it out that you really don't like. And that's the next thing I want to talk about is understand. You could only smell about five fragrances before your nose is exhausted. The whole thing of smelling coffee beans is a joke. It's a lie. You know, it was made up by some perfumer a hundred years ago. He would do this as part of his routine, but it has shown, yeah, no, you can't reset your nose. What you can do is you can step out. You can go walking around, maybe try two to three things and then leave, go walking around and come back in 30 minutes to an hour. But that's the only way to reset your nose. Now, when it comes to putting on the fragrances, don't be shy. They are there. They are testers. You are allowed to put it on your skin. I know some people, they will only put it on the tester strips. The problem with the paper is it doesn't have your unique oil and composition and what's normally on your skin, and it's going to smell slightly different. When you put it on your skin, you actually get to smell the top. 
you get to smell the middle, you get to smell the base, and over the next couple hours, you can smell this and see actually how does it work for you. Some of my friends, they say that they could smell eight fragrances at the same time on their body. Those kind of people, choke people out on an airplane and they get kicked out of cars because they smell too bad. Guys, don't overdo it. I would say just one spray on each wrist is perfectly fine. Maybe you could put one spray on the chest as well. And again, if you feel strange about doing this, don't, don't stick it under your shirt. That'll look like shoplifting. Just spray on the outside. No one is going to say anything. And if they do, well, <laughs> just move on to the next door. Point being is you do want to be able to try this, but don't do ever do more than three. I think two is more than enough and preferably you've just got one fragrance that you actually put on both wrists, maybe on the chest area, and then you walk out and you wear it for a few hours and actually see if this works for you. A super secret ninja tip right here is to actually record a video, not only of the fragrance you're testing, especially if you're testing more than one, but actually your first reaction to the smell and to record that information so you have it for later. We like to think we can remember everything. Yeah, good luck with that. And tied with that point is to actually do a little bit of research. That's why I like just testing out one fragrance because then I can go over to websites like Fragrantica and read about all the notes. See, can I identify? Can I smell the notes? I love reading the comments and what people leave, you know, saying down below. Some of it is pretty funny, but also a lot of it, can you relate to it? Are you smelling what this person smells or is it the complete opposite? Does this person have it wrong? Now, specifically where to buy. So if you buy it in a store, there's a lot of great options. Instant satisfaction, you grab the fragrance, and you leave. And most of them have really tight supply chains, so you're not going to be dealing with counterfeits or something that's fake, uh, especially if it's wrapped in plastic. And again, it comes from a reputable person. You can actually take it back if you suspect it's counterfeit. Now, not everyone's going to have a return policy. As you guys know, a lot of discounters like maybe TJ Maxx, uh, you're going to go into there and yeah, you can't return things after you buy it from them. But there are other places like Walmart, Sam's, Costco, they've got amazing return policies. And so if you have an issue with the fragrance, just simply take it back. Now, the problem with a lot of those places that I just mentioned is that they don't actually have samples that you can smell there. So if that's really important to you, go into Ulta. I know here in the United States, we've also got Sephora, which recently just actually is in Kohl's, which is awesome. I've been going to it and love it. Uh, but also, you know, higher end box stores like Nordstrom's are going to have tons of great options, especially some of the higher end fragrances. And this is great because you got to go into those stores sometimes anyway. And I didn't mention this earlier. If you're going to be testing fragrances, don't put anything on. You don't want to have a super powerful Parfums de Marly. You know, I love their fragrances, but they're strong. They're powerful. And that is not going to allow you, if you want to test out a Creed fragrance, to put that on because it's usually lighter. It's airier. Those are fragrances aren't overpowering. And it's going to be difficult to detect if you're still rocking, you know, I don't know, Oud for Greatness. And, you know, it's been 10 hours because that stuff goes on forever. Now, the problem with buying in person, as many of you guys know, is you're not going to get the best deal. The best deals are online. But understand, and if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. You're over on Wish and you see a fragrance that normally goes for 200 bucks and it's going for 20. Understand that is probably, it's a counterfeit. They're going to steal your money. Even eBay, you really need to make sure. Now, I know tons of people have great luck on eBay, but you need to look, research the seller. Make sure that they are a legitimate seller. They've got real reviews, not bought reviews. Um, but other places on like, I talked about, you know, especially the ones you can walk into. Actually, that's always a great combination. If you you see an online deal at Ulta or Sephora. I have found, I've returned to Sephora things I've bought online. So that actually has worked out pretty well for me. Um, the discounters, you're going to see tons of gray market options out there. When I say gray market, that is actually wherever, let's say Ulta, I'm not saying they do this, but they've got to offload a lot of fragrance. They've just got too much of this. They got to make room. They actually sell it to a discounter at about the price that they got it for. And they're able to say, Hey, we got rid of this. We sold this and they can get new stock in. So oftentimes on the gray market, you're going to, the fragrances could be, have sat there for a while. They could be a couple years old. And I'll talk about that at the end, which you got to watch out for age, but, uh, you know, they're a great option if, again, you know what you're going to get because still they are expensive. And if you buy a fragrance that you do not like and you use it, you can't return it to most of these online discounters. Now, I know for me personally, I do like to be able to get a deal on all my fragrances. I buy them with my own money. So it is something that I join the email lists of a lot of the general brands like Yves Saint Laurent, because you're not going to find those at a lot of, you know, discounters or things. Well, you will, but not the newest releases. But what's interesting is if you're on their email list or you give them your phone number on their text list, uh, I find that they do do discounts occasionally. They're really careful about it. And Chanel, you know, is notorious for not doing anything, but they will combine things. They'll make it worth your while. It'll be something that you'll find a way to be able to get a particular, let's say, credit card and save 20%, even though it is Chanel, you find a way to do it. So 
get creative with that stuff. I do find that it is worth being on their email list to be able to get occasionally when they've got some deals going, but uh, you got to watch for it because they are hard to find. Now let's talk about the bad. And first up, let's talk about clones. So a lot of you guys recognize this clone right here. It's a clone of Creed Aventus, uh, Club de Nuit Intense. And this fragrance right here, I have to say, does smell different. It is not the same. It's a little bit dirtier, but it is stronger. Guys, if you can't afford the real thing, I get it. And I don't hold anything. I think clones are perfectly fine. They serve a purpose. That being said, don't fall into the trap of thinking that a clone is the real thing. Because studies, I, I've even got a study that talks about people that wear clones or they wear uh, ones that are generics, they don't really feel the same confidence as somebody that's wearing the real thing. And this is a psychological phenomenon that shows, yes, price has a lot to do with how we perceive. In fact, there's that classic study of a bunch of wine connoisseurs getting served three different bottles of wine, one of them being a $10 wine, one of them being a $100 wine at like a $1,000 wine. And when it came to the $1,000 wine, you know, these guys were like describing it as amazing. The $10 wine, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it was okay. But what's funny is it was the same wine. We may all laugh at that, but what's interesting on this study is they actually measured their brain and the reaction and what they tasted. And even though it was the same wine, the people that paid or thought they paid more money for the expensive one, they uh, were able to taste things. Their brain activated in ways it did not with the cheaper. What am I saying here? Oftentimes, what you sacrifice and what you do to get something has an effect on how good it tastes, on how its taste and smell are right next to each other. They're almost the same thing. So I will say, guys, what I, if you're going to go with a clone, I would advise, hey, getting a sample of the original and smelling the original and occasionally wearing the original on an important date. And then every day, yeah, wear the clone because you can't afford to be wearing that maybe expensive stuff all the time, but you understand the difference. And you, and to me, then you get the benefit of both. Now I mentioned counterfeits and this is a real issue because these fragrances sell for a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks. You can bet that somebody is going to find an ingenious way to be able to try to fool people so that they can get money and they're throwing in just some random stuff. Maybe it smells close. Maybe it's some company that actually is making something over, I don't know, in China or, you know, they're simply just packaging this up. I've actually seen Creed packaged over on Wish that looks somewhat legitimate, but you can tell if you know Creed that this is off. It's not the real deal because they don't sell in these sizes. But, you know, for the uninitiated, someone that doesn't have a deeper knowledge of this, they could make a bad purchase. Now, where do I see this happening? Um, I do see this, you know, Amazon. I'm not going to say you can't get legitimate fragrances off of Amazon, but you really want to make sure you're buying from a, the right seller. People go to walmart.com and actually Walmart sells through other people sometimes. If you're going to buy from Walmart, buy from Walmart. Don't buy from uh, some of these uh, fake, yeah, some of these other places because they don't have the same type of backup and guarantee that Walmart has. So I would say, you know, be very careful of this. And this is why for some fragrances, I buy directly from the manufacturer because then I know I'm getting the real deal. Now, what about bad fragrances? Fragrances that just don't smell right. So I'm thinking this rarely happens that actually a fragrance maybe is really old. It was left in a warehouse where the temperatures went from extremely hot to extremely cold. It was maybe left in the sun and it just, yeah, it's not what it used to be. Uh, but I think a lot of times people just didn't test the fragrance. They don't even know what they should be smelling for. And they smell something in it that remind, gives them a, a, they have some type of other association with it. They were conditioned in a way that there's a note in here that they just don't like. You know how some people just really do not like cilantro? It tastes horrible to them. I love cilantro. And I think it's almost something similar to that. So when you see a lot of people saying it was a bad batch, be careful of that. Yes, and I know there are reformulations. You see this especially with higher-end fragrances. Everyone's talking about batch numbers. Now, a lot of times the reformulations happen because let's just take oak moss. This was something that was shown to cause irritation in some people. So across the board, they pretty much eliminated oak moss. Now, the bad part about this is that oak moss, the original stuff, actually made fragrances last long and be very strong. So a lot of people, they get, you know, they tested a fragrance they had when they were younger. They get a new bottle 20 years later and like, ah, oh, this stuff is a shadow of what it used to be. Well, probably because they're not using the original ingredients. They do have to reformulate. They do every single, you know, I don't know, a couple months, they're putting out new batches. And so these things do change over time. And if you really like a fragrance, then 
get a couple bottles of it, I guess. Now, at this part in the video, I'm going to say some things which are a little bit controversial in the fragrance industry, but I feel that they are uncomfortable truths. You ready for them? Number one is that most designer fragrances are actually really solid. I think it is very rare that we have a designer fragrance come out that somebody is going to be repelled by. These designer fragrances are made to sell. So you can bet that they're going to hit all the buttons that for the majority of men, you try on one of those fragrances, you're going to get compliments. Somebody is going to like it. Maybe you don't like it, but to understand that the majority of designer fragrances are actually well-made. Now, the second uncomfortable truth, I know a lot of fragrance guys online are going to agree with, but if you work in a department store, you may think, Antonio, that's not very nice. And that is that most people selling fragrances do not know much about fragrances. I'm sorry, but it's just you walk into these stores and the vast majority of the people I speak with have no idea about notes and all the details. That being said, there are some people, especially in the higher end luxury stores or in specific fragrance stores, they know that, I mean, so much more than me. I've only been studying it for a few years, but I've been pretty diligent. I've every single day been trying to dedicate 30 minutes to the craft, but it is something that you get a lot of people who are maybe straight out of college or high school, and they're just selling this as a part-time job, and they don't know anything about fragrances. So be careful about who you listen to. Really, it's best if you educate yourself so that you can make your own decision. The third uncomfortable truth is that everything in fragrances is subjective. Okay, maybe the formulations are objective. But even then, you know, change things up. Every batch could be a little bit different the way they formulate it, the exact percentages. Everything is subjective because as human beings, we it's like music. Some people like rap, some people like rock, other people like classic. And the same thing with fragrances. You're going to have some people like sheep, sheepers. You're going to have other people like orientals. Other people like everything. Some people not like anything except woody, woody fragrances. Guys, so understand when you're listening to someone's opinion, it is just that their opinion. Next up, the price is all about the marketing. Understand that the profit margins on fragrances is incredibly high. That being said, as I talked about that study with the wine earlier, the price has a huge effect on not only how you perceive the fragrance, but when you smell it, what is activated in your brain. Because when you're smelling what you think to be a $500 fragrance versus a $10 fragrance, you just have different expectations and the way that you're smelling it is different. And the fifth uncomfortable truth is that only you can buy the right fragrance for you. You can't get it as a gift. Well, maybe there's a chance that someone could gift you a fragrance that is absolutely amazing and you think is the best for the rest of your life. But for the majority of men, they actually have the ability to be able to put a fragrance on and smell what actually enhances. A lot of guys do not feel com comfortable doing this. They feel that they don't know enough, but guys, trust yourself. Learn a little bit. You don't need to know a whole lot, but you can go out there and make the right decision for you because at the end of the day, you know your needs, you know your wants better than anyone. And when you put on that right fragrance, it's it's a great experience. All right, gents, so what video to watch next? Well, if you want your fragrance to last all day, this is the video you want to watch. Seriously, if you just want a average fragrance to be to last a good eight hours, 10 hours, guys, this is the video for you. Solid fragrance, solid video, as you can tell. I talked a lot about fragrances. I am done for the day, guys. Go check it out. Solid video. See you in the next one.